Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Sideline Talk. This is episode 40. Game week one for Sober MLB finished up yesterday. And game week two will be going live during the recording of this episode, actually. So I'm glad that I have my lineups set already. Did not forget to do that. Today's guest was actually the first guest ever of this show back in June of last year, back when it was called Tweet Talk. Terrible name. Thank you, Elon, for saving me from, from that name. We are now Sideline Talk over here. He is the so rare. He is a so rare whale, although he has sold some of his cards. We'll get to that. He is a collector of Oakland Athletics so rare MLB cards. Please welcome Bob Flynn, a.k.a. Orange Fly. Bob, how's it going? What's going on, man? It's great to be back, Hunter. Thanks for having me, dude. Thanks yeah, for having me. Yeah. Uh, A's right now. I think I'm tied for first with the Brewers and Jackson Churio's limited card just hit the market and I've already put a big bid on that. If somebody outbids me, then you earned it, buddy. No. <laughs> yeah, so you, you did collect all these A's uh, I noticed um, when you got back into buying. What What is it with you and the athletics that you like? I know all the cards are cheap, but the team as a whole, uh, they are not very good. Maybe, maybe the worst team in the league, uh, bottom five at least. Uh, what is with you and the athletics? I, you know what, growing up as a kid, I really liked watching them play ball. They had the Bash Brothers and the Bash Brothers really got me into baseball. So Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco, taking all of the steroids in the world, hitting the ball as far as they possibly could. And it was a lot of fun to watch the game. And, you know, you got to remember, you know, back before a lot of people that would, that are playing the game now, like Ricky Henderson was there and Ricky Henderson was this stolen base guy. He would get on base and he'd steal bases. And what I saw with the A's is a young guy last year, an Este Ruiz, who I loved. Like he wasn't really good at getting on base, but whenever he got on base, he stole. And when I mentioned Ruiz, that's a shout out to the guys over at Sower FP. That's Alex and Clamp and Robbie, who absolutely loathe him. I think he's an absolutely horrible baseball player. And so shout out to those guys. I still like him. He steals bases. He's fun to watch. You know, there aren't a lot of guys in the game that can single-handedly screw up a pitcher's outing. You know, he gets on first base and he steals second, he steals third, and then you're completely screwed at that point. And so he did it a few times, but I don't know. It's like the underdog story, man. I like sticking with teams, like sticking with bad teams. It's kind of cool just to see how they do and cheer for them. And it's kind of fun to watch what happens. You know, they've got some good young and up and coming talents. I like guys like Ryan, uh, Zach Eloff, you know, Ryan Noda. And so these are guys that people in Sower are just not going to buy. And honestly, I don't blame you. They're not great. So, <laughs> but it seemed to be a cheap way to get into collection game hunter and try to figure out what I wanted to do when I was coming back into the game. Cause you said I sold a bunch of cards and I want to try to put together a plan for how I was going to approach this season. And the A's were number one, the worst team, which means that their prices for like the one of mints were probably going to be really low and that I would be able to get them. And so I like them. I watch uh, them play all the time. So I figured why not, you know, let's see what happens. Yeah. And, and I noticed you, you sold um, all your cards. I actually was unaware that you sold everything. I thought maybe you just sold your super rares and, and your rares. And I looked at your gallery. I saw only limiteds. Uh, you have like 120 or so. Um, so I know there was some, some talk last year among the whales that people wanted to sell. They weren't happy with the reward structure at the higher tiers. Uh, what made you actually go out and, and actually sell everything uh, in the off season? It, there weren't enough, there wasn't enough attention really paid uh, to where I was playing. And I didn't think the amount of money that I was putting in was worth my time or even the possibility of return because there just simply wasn't return on any of it, Hunter. So what essentially would happen is when you build the kind of gallery that I had last year, which was all T1 super rares and a bunch of uniques, it's hard to win cards that have, that will like fundamentally change what your team is going to be, right? So like I need to win guys like Aaron Judge, Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, right? At the super rare level. And what they did is they really kind of saved those for the people that won unique divisions. And so I knew I wasn't going to win those cards, even playing at unique because it's unique is much harder to win. Right. And even when I won unique, I wasn't winning the best cards. I was winning more of the middle to lower tier of that T1 range. And so that's guys like I won a Devers last year. I think I won a Trout, you know, Bo Bichette, like great cards, like great, great, great cards, but not guys that are going to fundamentally change what I'm doing because it comes down to, 
am I going to play Rafael Devers over Jose Ramirez? Like based on matchups and stuff like that, you know, am I going to play Bo Bichette over Ozzy Albies or Corey Seager, you know, or Bobby Witt? Like where am I going to go? So it's very difficult to kind of like change your team fundamentally up at the top. And so what that means is there weren't a lot of people looking to buy those cards either. So essentially people like Dewey and Ace and YW and I, we'd, we'd win. And then we'd end up selling whatever cards we didn't want to one of the guys in the group already that didn't have the card, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, we just kind of like just started trading around with each other. And then after a while, everybody kind of gets those cards. You're just like, well, what next? And so you kind of sit around with cards and it's just, it wasn't easy to sell. There weren't enough people interested in playing up there because honestly the rewards weren't good enough. You know, you have to win to have any sort of improvement. And, you know, I got one of the things that really broke the camel's back for me is at one point, I don't know if you remember this, they said, if you win unique all-star, we're going to give you a T4 unique. And of course, in the first week, I won unique all-star. They didn't give me a T4 unique. And so I was kind of pissed about it. And I think rightfully so. You know, and one of the big things I say it on most podcasts I go on is like, you have to keep your promises. If you make an announcement, especially in a blog post, you really need to stick to it and do these things. But they didn't do it. And so I was pretty frustrated. And I thought I felt rightfully, rightfully pissed off that I didn't get a unique from the rewards. And like, I understand that, you know, I got another great card. I got something, whatever it was, but it bothered me that they weren't able to fulfill what they had promised. And so at that point, you know, I'd had a number of conversations with people that were running the game and with some of the other bigger players in the game, as well as many people like yourself and Nick and people over at Sower FP. And it's kind of the realize that, why am I putting so much money into this if they're not going to do what they're saying? And that was last year. And I decided, you know what? I need to take a step back. I need to have fun. This shouldn't be bothering me every week to win a competition and then be really frustrated. And I'm getting a Marcus Simeon as my T1 reward who just snuck into T1. He's going to be down at T2 again next week. You know what I mean? Like it just mm-hmm. it wasn't worth it at that point. And so, I sold everything off and I took that money. I put it into the soccer side of things and I've been having a lot of fun with soccer. Soccer has changed. And so I don't know what I'm doing there at this point, but I said, so rare created what I feel is the best fantasy game on the market today. And I want to continue to play it. So how can I play it in a way that I want to play it? And I said, I want to de-risk. I don't want to put as much money in. And I went to limit it. And it's fun, man. And like, and I'm trying to how to get that advantage in limited. And that's kind of how, and I'm sure we'll talk about it. Like I went for a collection score kind of approach. Yeah, no, I'm glad you, you joined limited. That's where I uh, play exclusively. Um, and uh, it's very fun at the limited tier. I, I love it at the big fields, you know, trying to beat all these people uh, to get first. And it's where most people play. So, yep. so I like that you are um, in limited. Um, so when you, when you were selling off, uh, your your old cards did you did you have to sell them at, at a loss like was it um was it difficult to to liquidate everything how did that go for you i mean yeah i sold at a, a little bit of a loss but keep in mind i had been winning a lot of cards and so it's hard to i'd have to retrospectively go back and look at the cards that i won and what i sold those for so like yeah you know, i won guys like shohei it's super it's super so i mean i'm looking at just my wins here on the sacks i keep my bobbleheads right so i mean there's Bob Bichette, trey turner shohei bobby witt mike trout juan soto and rafael devers those in and of themselves made up more than enough to get me back to almost even with what i sold what is what i had been buying you know what i mean so did I take a haircut on a lot of the crappy uniques I had? Yeah, of course. Like, and I understand that, you know, but those crappy uniques won me a lot of those guys. And so I can't be too mad about where it goes. I, I wasn't expecting a Rowdy Telez or a Hunter Renfro unique to keep value at where it was previously. Now, keep in mind, guys like Kyle Bradish broke out. Guys like Bruce Dar Grotterall, like, really good reliever at the unique level. So I was able to sell those guys at a little bit of a bump 
to where I bought them. So like that helps in the long math of things. But I understood that for a lot of those pieces that are not T1 and high-end T2s, you're going to take a bit of a haircut. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I knew exactly what I was getting into. I knew I was okay with it because I knew I had a plan for what I was going to do next. So, yeah, uh, you, you referenced the bobbleheads real quick. Uh, one of the coolest things you did last year was you bought a bobblehead of the card uh, when you won a tournament. Uh, you still plan on doing this for, for this season if you win any limited contests? Absolutely, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, that's what's nice about limited. Like I can enter all five tournaments at this point. You know, I mean, I have, like I said, 120 some odd cards and I've got some pretty good players just sitting on the bench that won't make teams. You know, I'm not sure that I've even played Francisco Lindor yet. I mean, rightfully so. The Mets aren't very good. Shout out Robbie. But the the cards that I have, like, it's all going to be based on matchups. And I'll be able to use my baseball knowledge, hopefully, to figure those things out. And, you know, we're kind of talking pregame. Like, in the first week, like, if you're not, if you don't have Guardians and you don't have Diamondbacks who are playing two of the worst teams in baseball that we knew were going to be bad in the A's and the Rockies, you're going to be a little bit in a tough position here. And so we see this kind of come to fruition. But what's nice about the top of the limber, the leaderboard, especially limited, is that cards are all over the place. You don't just need the top end guys, especially in limited. Like it's awesome. And it's a lot more fun. There's a lot more chance and opportunity. And yes, I mean, I'm going to buy a bobblehead if I manage to win limited. And I'm really excited about it, you know, and who knows if I live when limited champion, it's just money. Like you look at a big gold chain with a dollar sign on it and be like one of those guys. Cause that would be fantastic. Love it. Uh, so you mentioned getting back into the game. Uh, you think so rare is, is the best fantasy, you know, sports platform. And, and you wanted to play this year, even though you sold off your cards, you went out and you bought some, some 2024 cards. Um, so was it just the hype about baseball uh, happening, people talking about it that made you want to get in? Or was there anything in the roadmap that was announced, uh, maybe the $1 million in cash prizes, reward boxes, um, anything like that that really you know wanted you to, to get back into the game as well? Well, like I said, I mean, I think Sower accidentally created the best fantasy baseball game there is. When I say accidentally, there are a lot of games, like the football game and the basketball game, they are complex. There's a lot of stats in things that go into creating a person's score. And what's nice about baseball is that baseball is designed for fantasy sports. Like there, there are very specific, clear stats that if you assign values to, you can do those things. And so I know that every time Ronald Acuna comes up, if he gets a, if he hits a double, I get five points. If he hits a home run, you know, I do the math I'm like, oh man, he gets the home run. That's worth 10 and he scores a run. That's three. And he gets an RBI. That's three. I get 16. Like these are easy things to do. So like you can sit there at the end and be like, all right, so I need somebody to get on base and I need Bobby Witt Jr. to hit a home run. And if he does, I get a podium. Like that's awesome. That's thrilling. And it's simple. Keep it simple, stupid. And so when it came to that limited level, it's just like the idea of, Doing it in the game itself really drove me in. Like there wasn't anything else that like, brought me back. It's not FOMO or stuff like that. I just I wanted to play a game that I enjoyed, and because I am uber uber competitive, I wanted to figure out what my strategy would be that would just give me a little bit of an edge to go from you know twenty third place to twentieth place, which is a jump in money that you could win at the limited champion level. And so the roadmap itself. When Limited Champion came in and you could win cash, that really had me interested because I feel that with my experience in so rare and my knowledge of baseball, looking at, you know, ballpark factors, you know, pitcher, like lefty, righty, righty, lefty, 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 righty, righty, like all those kind of matchups and things that you look at. I feel confident enough in myself if I have a deep enough gallery to do well enough in champion to get some money each week. Like that's like my goal for the season. And that those little wins should add up to covering a decent chunk of what I spent to get here. Like that doesn't even take into account winning other random rewards and all-star and stuff like that. And so I felt that there was a chance for some ROI if I was smart and I stayed up to date on who's doing what and what's going on. Like the one thing you can't predict about baseball though, and we know it going into this week is weather. So what's going to get rained out? Like Spencer Strider is set to start the last game of a three game series against the White Sox, which is a perfect matchup for anybody. 
but it's supposed to be pouring all the time in Chicago. And for the life of me, I don't know why you schedule games in Chicago at the start of April. Like that's really, really stupid. Play in places with a dome, you know, like simple or in the South. But anyway, those are the things that I'm thinking at. That's what I'm looking at. That's why I jumped back in. I thought there was an opportunity to number one, have fun. And number two, win a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely get some retractable roofs up there in Chicago in April. I think uh, that would make sense uh, for less rainouts. And yeah, the Spencer Strider thing, uh, didn't even look at the weather. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of risk involved starting a pitcher on the last day in the game week. Um, yep. if there is rain up, uh, Bob, you were actually the one that, that, uh, told me that on our first episode, very, uh, good information there. Um, all right. So you mentioned, uh, rewards a little bit. I did see that you, you won a jazz Chisholm limited, uh, for this past game week. I actually yep. found out that, uh, we were given rewards by looking at your gallery when I was preparing for the show. I saw that you got your reward. I went and saw that I got my rewards, which were not as good as, as Jazz Chisholm, unfortunately. Um, what, what were your thoughts on this reward, and, and how did your, your game week one go? Man, I was pumped. I actually was considering buying a Jazz for this week because they have four games. And there aren't a lot of good teams that have four games this week. You know, it's Cardinals, Marlins, Royals. Like, those aren't exciting teams. You know, so who are you playing from those teams? Bobby Witt. Jazz is the best option on the Marlins. Are you going to go with Goldschmidt? Are you going to go with Arenado, Jordan Walker? Like, where are you? what are you going to do in there if you're trying to maximize games? And then you're like, well, you know, Bobby Witt and the Royals, they have three games against, you know, the Orioles, and one of them is against Corbin Burns. That, that doesn't seem like a really good matchup for anybody, right? So I'm trying to figure these things out, and I was considering buying Jazz because Jazz is Jazz. You know, if Jazz is not suspended or doing something stupid, he's a really good card to play and own. So I was really pumped, you know, and I got lucky because the lineup that won that was all because of the Sunday night baseball. And this is what I'm talking about with keep it simple, stupid, like the, the simple scoring. I knew that I had uh, Teoscar Hernandez and Max Muncy going in that game in that limited all-star team. And they went nuts. And they pounded and they jumped me up there. And I was like, man, it's too bad that Phillips, that Evan Phillips is not available because he, if he came in and got a save with three strikeouts, I might've actually podiumed in that. <laughs> because like, that's how I had those things set up. And I, it's a weird thing that I do. I don't know if it's weird or not, but I love having guys in Sunday night baseball because having a guy in that last game of the game week is a rush, especially if you, and are in a position to do better. And it's just, it's fun, man. I've won and lost on those. And watching Muncie hit that home run, I went nuts because not only did it help me jump up to a T1 or a T2, it also helped our buddy over at Sower FP, Alex, actually win a competition, which is incredible. Like winning the first week is just a great, great feeling. And so all together, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, man. It's just, it, the game itself is addicting and fun and i wouldn't want it any other way honestly <laughs> love the way the game is set up yeah i saw alex got first place and he won a uh, julio rodriguez rare uh in game week uh one i mean that's that's the hottest possible start uh to to your season so shout out to alex there yep. um you also mentioned uh the four game teams yeah they're not good uh having your royals cardinals white Sox, marlins guardians uh really nothing there that stood out maybe the marlins and they've showed some pop they are zero and four but their offense um doesn't didn't look that bad as the pirates outscored them in that series um so i want to ask you bob uh are you what contests are you focusing on the most is it is it the champion ones where you can use the new cards you have you know tons of new cards um and and what what sort of teams are you looking to put in in the contest you're focusing on the most it is all limited champion for me yeah. It's all limited champion for me. And we'll talk about it. Like I have a lot of cards, 120 or so, and almost all of them are the new season cards. The reason for that is because I'm taking advantage of the collection bonuses. So as I said at the start, getting all of the A's and being number one in A's gives me a 5% added bonus. So my Zach Geloff cards have a 10% attached to them already. And now after this first week, they get another half a percent to put on. But my Dodgers, I think I'm number two collector for the Dodgers, and that already has a 4% bonus added on to it. So these are the little things that will add a few points here and there 
that will help me win. So it's Dodgers are at 4%. I think the Yankees are pushing 4% with Soto and Judge is what I have there. Uh, my Astros is around 3. My Orioles are 3. Like Rangers at 3. Diamondbacks at 3. Like And so all of these little pieces give you an advantage as you go through there. Because like I said, you know, the difference between me, I came in 20th this week in champion. And it was because of the percentages that I had and because I put a boost on Mookie bets. If I don't do those things, instead of winning 50 bucks, I might win five or 10. And to me, that's well worth doing it to try to maximize my return on what I can possibly do. So like, that was a big thing in my eyes. I was super pumped about it. I mean, you see that like all of my Rangers have 8%. Like, and that's awesome as it goes through. All of the Dodgers are at 9%. And I mean, it's just, it's, it certainly helps uh, when you're actually building these things out. Yankees at eight. Like I tried to get a couple Jersey mints and I got outbid on, I think Torres and Giancarlo Stanton. Like there's a, there's a percent that I'm willing to go up to, to bid on these things, but it's all in the pursuit of trying to win this stuff. And to me, putting a boost on, I will always put a boost in my champion team. And I will more than likely put one into my AL and my NL teams because those teams can be a bit more structured, right? There's a high probability when you look at my teams, Hunter, that the Rangers or Dodgers or Yankees or somebody will have a pretty favorable matchup going into a week or Braves, you know, and worst case scenario, I dump you know, Ronald Acuna and Matt Olson with Shohei Otani and Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman say, well, let's see what happens. These guys might suck, but not. you know what I mean? Like, and so that's kind of how I built this out. And, you know, you see William Contreras there at 9%. I think that's the second Contreras that I have. That's the second Geloff that I have, but it's four collection bonuses on my end. So that's really why I did a lot of what I did when it comes down to this stuff. Yeah, and this Geloff here uh, was purchased, uh, I believe it said over there, uh, 54. Oh, maybe you have it listed. Um, not listed. Not sure. Yeah. Okay. His normal price is about $15, but I spent yeah. like 54 on him. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, so so I want to ask you. I've, sorry, massively, I've massively overpaid for a lot of these cards, <laughs> but I do have a plan. Like, and the whole idea is can I play this entire plan out long enough throughout the course of the season to see a little bit of a benefit from it? And because I'm so deep now with all of these cards, I believe that I can. Yeah, no, I mean, if you're going for the collection score, you got to overpay a little bit uh, to get the full collection. That's just uh, the rite of passage there. Um, yeah. I want to ask you as well. So a lot of these cards uh, were acquired via, or almost all of them I, that I've clicked on uh, via auction. Mm -hmm. Um, so is that have you have you dipped into manager sales do you like dipping in there or do you, do you find that you just stick to uh, auctions instead for collection score purposes if your goal if i'm i'm spending this money for collection scores right. so there is no benefit for me to buy off of the secondary market to get 10 points for collector score when instead i can buy it off of the auction and i can get 30 points of collector score like three times as much. It makes a pretty massive difference when it comes right down to it. So right. that's why I buy it off the auction. That's why I'm actually a pretty big fan of the auction credits that we're going to get in the basic limited boxes and stuff like that, which I think will be really good, you know, for some certain things. Like they'll make it, I will be a lot more apt to go into instant buys with the market credits and just kick, click it and use it when it comes right down to it. Because for me, Every little bit matters. I have to get to that 750 collector score. So I get 5% on my cards because I want to maximize where and what my cards can actually generate for me. And because I've owned them from day one, I am guaranteed once I hit 5%, like that 750 score hunter to be, to have the top score and percentage wise cards for those teams throughout the entire course of the year so as we're doing champion like no one's going to have higher than me when it comes to percentages yeah and i like what uh so Rare did here uh that they didn't have last year was they have a little blurb from rotowire giving yep. some analysis on the players very helpful there 
as well. Um, so Bob, you don't mind explaining for new people, what exactly is the difference between instant buy and auction? I see you have both. Uh, what exactly are the difference between those two? Yeah. So auction essentially, you know, auction is just your, your typical, like, you know, if you've used eBay in the past, you're bidding on an item and it's all, it's only going to go for whatever the person that you are going up against is willing to go to and no higher than that. So there is no set limit to where this thing can go. I mean, if, if I'm bidding for that one James Paxton, then everybody is free to bid on it. You know, when it comes to instant mm -hmm. buy, instant buy is a different setup within the marketplace itself. And instant buy allows you to go in and basically click instant buy. So it's, it's simply like the buy now button in eBay. There is a set price that so where we're put in place that is typically higher than the most recent sales. And it basically, you're paying a premium to get the cards immediately, essentially, to not wait for the auction. So think about, we have the deadline coming up. I don't know when the deadline is. It might have been like five minutes ago. But if you're like, oh, crap, I need to fill a lineup. I want Vinny Pascantino because the Royals have four games. I'm going to type in Vinny Pascantino or just Vinny up in the top and I'm going to search for him. I'm like, oh, so the auction is not going to be done until three hours after the the week is going to be started. So I won't even be able to use them. So, but I can just do this instant buy. And as I look at it, you know, he's auctioning for like $7. The instant buys at nine. Okay. $2. Am I willing to pay a $2 premium to get him now and put him in my lineup? And that's what it comes down to for people to make that decision. And so for me, these things are used in some cases, not used in other cases. You know, it really depends. Like there is a certain level, like I'm not going to go in and, instant buy a Shohei Otani for $300, right? But yeah. you know, if I am trying to boost my Josh Hader up to 7%, well, up to 8%, I want to get a whole bunch of Astros. I might go into the Astros team page and see what cards I have left. And if there are any like really cheap cards, because some of the instant buys on her are like a dollar, right? Like as cheap as you can get. And like those seem pretty straightforward, easy, just... 30 more points to add to my collection. And so, yeah, when you ask about old cards, I do have a whole bunch of old Mets. So <laughs> I wasn't playing yeah. as a champion and I wanted to, again, that was purely for collection score boosting. And you'll see, like, you don't know most of those guys like that. Mazika doesn't even play anymore. <laughs> but it's a rookie card who gets a higher collection score hunter. So I wanted to get the this Mets collection up to 2% so that Pete Alonso could be at 6% and Lindor could be there like higher up there and actually make them more useful when it comes to my teams, right? So I don't plan on using, you know, Brett Beatty or Mark Vientos, but again, cards that boosted my score and in total, I mean, look at 250, 430, 516, so like 11, $12 that I paid to boost those two guys up by a couple percentage points. And I, if I'm wanting to win because I'm playing to win, I felt that that was worth the price to do so. Now, I know that not a lot of people are going to do that and I don't blame you. It is legitimately setting money on fire for cards that you're not going to use. But, you know, maybe we get a special weekly where it says just use really crappy cards and then I can throw them in there. You know, it's... There are guys like, I'm probably not going to use that Willie Adamas, but he completed the Brewers set for me. Like, I think I'm tied for first right now in Brewers collection as well. And so these things, they, they do matter to me. I, I like them. They, the collection score and actually planning around the collection score has made it fun for me to boost these things up. Yeah, and I saw you have um, 16 Brewers, uh, only two games uh, in this upcoming game week. So that's pretty unfortunate uh, for one of your your big collections there. Do not start them or maybe start them here and there. But if they're playing two games and some teams are playing four games, maybe you just want to sit them this week. Well, um, I mean, like so like so think about the Brewers, like anyone that has two games, like you're not going to play unless you're in Mexico City and they're playing it. Illegally, <laughs> right. So you're not going to do that. But when it comes to the Brewers, they have a very hitter friendly ballpark with a dome up in Milwaukee. And they have some guys that can really hit the ball a long way. Reese Hoskins, who likes to slide into Brett Beatty, or Jeff McGill, and, you know, <laughs> Willie Adamas, and these guys, like, they're going to be good. And now, again, with the Brewers, 
you know, Jackson Churio is just came up on auction. And if you went to search for him, you would see that I definitely have the first bit. <laughs> you know, because okay. I want that card. Because again, the one of mint for these guys is the best mint. Uh, I mean, other than the Jersey mint and all that stuff, as far as collection score goes. And so this is what I'm looking for. So you can see, and people are going to start pumping in bids and seeing how far we go up, but this is a card that I want. So, Oh yeah. This is, I mean, this is a top prospect right here. Oh yeah. yeah. This is, yeah it's, this is a good you know, card. I, I'm a fan of Jackson Churio. I've been waiting for Jackson Churio, you know, and this not only is the big collection bonus, you know, because Jackson Churio, if I'm able to win him, will be right at uh, eight or nine percent already, like right from the get go. I think it'll be at nine percent because I think that puts me over like for four percent. So he'd be a fun card to use all the time, and I will. You know, just because there are some teams that I will use guys that I like in there that may not be the best, but guys that I like, and this is definitely one of them. Yeah, he looks like he's going to be real good. Just 20 years old. Yep. Got the number one out of a thousand here. Oh, that's a very nice looking card here. Yeah. Uh, you got to make sure you get that. You got to outbid that guy, Logan Dell. Do we know who Logan Dell is? Nope. But <laughs> a lot of people are going to put bids in. And like, and that's what you want. You want an active market, you know? Yeah. And it, it really comes down to who's willing to spend for these things. And what are you willing to spend? You know? I'm willing to be, and I say this now, hoping that Logan Dell and other people are watching this. I'm willing to spend a lot of money and be really stupid about stuff like this. Because I think <laughs> I have proven throughout my time in so rare, you know? So Yeah, Logan Dell, if you're watching, uh, Bob is probably going to outbid you at some point uh, for that Cheerio card. But we'll see. We'll see what, what price that ends up going to. <laughs> but, um, I mean, like, that super rare card right there, Hunter, is going to be fun to watch. Like That is one that will be really, really fun to watch. I mean, it's going to be the same kind of hype when Jackson Holiday gets his first card printed for the Orioles, you know, and they, these are the kind of things that we love to see, you know, Paul Skeens, when he comes up for the Pirates, like I will be right on top of that too. You know, yeah. any of the new A's that come up, I'm waiting for the new Mason Miller to be released. And so this is how I check this stuff. I basically go into, when I, when I clear my filters out, every day I go to auctions, I click on limited, and I go to serial number. I, I look to see if there are any jersey mints of teams that I'm interested in, of players I don't have. And then I also look to see if there's any one of serial numbers. And if there are, I'm taking a look at what teams they're on and if they can benefit me and if there are people that I want. Because when we were talking about the A's earlier, I actually have 16 out of 17 of the one ofs for the Oakland A's, which is pretty stupid. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, stupid or uh, pretty awesome, actually. I think. No, I mean, I think it's awesome. I don't think I have any Oakland A's in my lineups that I'm using this week, but hey, what do you can do, you know? Yeah, I want to talk about um, this upcoming week. I know this will come out uh, right as lock has already happened, but uh, is there any other team or players you're high on? We talked about the teams playing four games. They're not great. The pitchers didn't look great either when I was breaking it down. Um, I had Jesus Lazardo as a guy that stood out to me at home against the Angels, who mm -hmm. uh, do not look good and just got... Uh, Rex by Corbin Burns um, in, in on opening day. So um, are there any any pitchers or, or players you have your eye on for this week and maybe beyond? I mean, it's very cliche to say, you know, I want guys on the Dodgers, but, you know, I'm taking the risk that Bobby Miller is going to go on the last day of the game week. I, I think that he's absolutely fantastic. Glass now, I'm probably going to put Glass now out there because he's projected as one of the highest pitchers this week. I'm probably going to put him out there every single week until he falls apart because that can happen, you know? So like, those are the kind of guys I'm looking at, you know, and one of the things I was trying to think of today is do I start a guy like Charlie Morton because the Braves are playing the White Sox. And I don't even know if I did quite honestly, you know, I just kind of look through and figure out what will be best for my lineups and who I feel the most comfortable with based on matchups. Right. So, I mean, like I put Spencer Strider, Spencer Strider in one, but he's pitching on the last game of the game week. Yeah. And that becomes a problem when you're figuring these things out because it's not like the the White Sox have four games and the Braves have three, I believe. But the White Sox, that means the White Sox play the game the day after. So if there's a rain delay, then you have to play a double header. But if two days get rained out, then you're missing a game. You know, and we know, and this is good for everyone who's playing MLB. Major League Baseball does their best to get their 
their National League versus American League series together in one fell swoop. They don't want these teams going back and forth. It's not like division games where they will postpone it down the road. They're trying to do double headers to get everything done in one trip as they go for. So because this game, this Braves game is with the White Sox in Chicago, it's American League versus National League. I'm hoping they figure out how to get all of the games in. So like that's where the risk is. But the problem becomes I'm not comfortable starting Brave starters this week because if it's raining and the game gets rain, if the game gets rain delayed in the second inning, odds are that the starter doesn't come back in. And that sucks. So like these are things that I'm thinking about when I'm building my teams. I'm looking at weather reports and I never thought I'd have to be a meteorologist <laughs> in baseball. But here we are, you know, and it's it is what it is. And like my goal here with this team you can probably tell is to hit that 9%. That means I have to get to a 500 collection score on those guys. And so there are a few cards I still need to buy. Is it worth it is really the question. And I don't know, you know, I have to, I really want to look for guys with Jersey mints to reduce the number of cards that I need to buy essentially. Yeah. I see you have Ronald Acuna here, uh, $204. You got him for his new card. Um, yep. Probably my favorite player to watch. Do you think that was a good a good deal for him? I think it was. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's I am part of. It's hard to really talk about the price of these cards because I am very clearly buying early with a game plan, right? Yeah. Like I, I have a strategy in place when I'm making these purchases. I am doing this to have use of him all year and to maximize his bonuses because he's one of the best players in the game. So I want as high in, as high of scoring potential with all of my Braves as possible, and I want them for as long as possible. So I am willing to overpay for that. It's kind of like when we talked about the auction versus Instabuy. It's what kind of premium are you willing to pay for these guys before the season starts? And then are you willing to delve deeper into the entire team as well to build up their collection score and then build up their bonuses because they matter. Like it's, it's a couple points here and there and like the, the margins are very, very thin when it comes right down to it. So yes, I think that that was a good purchase. Do I think that $200 were hold all year? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. The question becomes, can I win enough in limited champion and elsewhere and potentially sell those cards? to get back essentially around what I spent on it to make it just a fun free roll type of year for me. You know? And yeah. mind you, a lot of the money that I'm using from this is from winning in soccer and selling some soccer cards that I was not going to use anymore. So I kind of, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I do recycle my money within the system. Yeah. Fair enough. And um, we're already at, at 38 minutes, but you did mention soccer. I did want to talk uh, just your soccer play before we end here. Um, you said you're more focused on that side. That's where um, you put your money after selling, you know, your baseball cards. Um, are you still, you know, exclusive, not exclusively because now it's baseball season, but are you still really focused on the soccer side and what has sort of your results been over there lately? I'm very focused on the soccer side, but there's been a fundamental shift in the game that started this week. And that fundamental shift feels like they looked at what I was doing because I was on a number of podcasts and they said, you know what? Let's destroy Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I'm obviously being facetious, but it certainly feels that way. So essentially in the past hunter, they had different divisions based on the competitions. So they had champion and champion has the best leagues that has the English premiership, La Liga, Bundesliga, Serie A and French Ligue. And so like, those are the best. Then you had challenger division, which had a lot of the middle teams from, you know, Airy DVC and JPL and the Scottish premiership and like a lot of teams in that. And that was more of a mishmash. And to me, that was the hardest division to compete in. And I still believe it is and always was the hardest division to, division to compete in. And then we had other subgroups. We had Asia with its own group. We had America with all the American teams. We had second division with all the guys that were not good enough to play in the champions and stuff like that. And so what ended up happening is they condensed everything. They removed those subdivisions and they put into just three divisions. They called it champion, which hasn't changed at all. 
Challenger, which now pulled in half, I mean half, they pulled in the English side of the second division teams and MLS and Brazil from America. And then Contender, when Contender has, you know, Liga MX from America. So they split that division and then has every other second division team in it. So basically, if you were playing in America or second division, your teams have now been split into two divisions and they're no longer unique. And so what this means is there are fewer divisions to enter, but they kind of, they believe that they remedied this by saying, Hey, you get, you can enter three teams now though. But what it comes down to is, so what does that say to you? So you have multi-entry. Multi-entry is a fun idea. If you have the best cards in a division as you go, but to me, it reads, huh, are we not getting enough people in and we are really relying and we're getting our people that are already in the, in so rare to double down and spend even more and more and more and get more pot committed to this because we can't bring people in because we know that they are kind of gamblers that want to do this. They want to enter and they will spend more money and we have to generate more revenue from them that are in the game. And that's a question that a lot of people have asked. And I, I wonder the same thing because it doesn't draw new users in, in my opinion. It, it doesn't draw new users in, but it also tells me that when you look at the game itself, it is very clearly slanted towards champion in EPL, which I understand. It's the five biggest leagues in the world. Like that's where when new players are going to come in, that's where they want to go. They don't want to go to, you know, the Norway division. They don't want to go to the area DVC. They don't want to go to Asia. You know, they want the best players. So I understand that. My concern, though, is the rewards are so split from cash rewards. They're so champ heavy that Challenger is still there. Contender is there, but it's not really fun to play in those right now. No, granted, it's been one week. You know, we're going to see what happens. But we no longer have the dividing that allows people like me that is completely focused on second division, which the teams aren't great. There's not a dominant team. In second division, they can just plug in and go and win all the time. Whereas now in that contender, second division, kind of like crummy team area, they're not even crummy. They're great. They're professional athletes. But some big, big squads in so rare that are there. So the most pertinent example is Celtic. This week, Celtic is the best of the best in the Scottish Premiership. And Celtic absolutely thunder thumped somebody this week. And basically all of the winners have Celtic in there. And like, and we, we understand that this can happen in any league, but in the past, what would happen is if you entered Celtic competitions, you would win challenger, the challenger competition or all-star competition. You would have no effect on Asia competitions. The Asian competitions would be in their own group. The second division competitions would be in their own group. So you still had winners in those with the other teams that they spent a lot of money on. And so now, basically, I believe that doing this, you are funneling more money to the top end cards, which I guess is a platform you want. You want the stars to be the stars. You want them to be more expensive, but at what cost? And I don't know what that is. I want to see in the future where this actually goes, because I'm concerned that you know, in a couple of years, like, is there the potential that Sower is just the big leagues and they don't re-sign the licenses for these smaller leagues? Because what's the point of having them? If you're going to give them considerably less money for winning the cash tournaments, if you're going to considerably cut back on the rewards and they're considerably worse players as well, like, what are we going to do? Are we going to start to stop with some of the league licenses, which has me wondering and like you know people say no you're crazy bob you're stupid but you know, maybe i am and i hope i am i hope i have seen in the past that they haven't re-signed teams that they've struggled to re-sign leagues and they need to make money and if the money is in the in the top of the leagues which we know it pretty much is that's where people want to buy especially new users what are we going to do and that is my concern for the long run of the so rare football side. Will in five years, if it's still here, just be the big leagues? Because hmm. I feel like I got hit and punched in the face with the second division. And I knew it would happen, but it's it's one thing to understand, to believe something 
is going to happen than to actually see what you have believed and feared come to fruition, at least in one week. And it's one week, you know, am I overreacting? Odds are yes, Hunter. And I go, get that. But these are actual thoughts that people need to really start thinking about because that's the reality. Like, what is the use of the other divisions if your whole focus is going to be on the top of divisions? And, and how do you remedy that? Instead of putting 80% of the cash in the top end divisions, split up the cash between all of the divisions. Make other people want to buy cards in the other divisions. No one does. You know, my second division cards are now relatively worthless. I can't really sell them. There's no dominant team. I have to get extremely lucky. Whereas in the past, over the last, since I sold my baseball cards on her, I think I've hit like 15 podiums with a number of wins. So that's a yeah. lot of coming in in second division. Second division is gone. Those cards that I'm using, they're now split. Some are in challenger, some are in contender. So hmm. my gallery is kind of effed when it comes to it. It's like, oh, okay, well, that sucked. <laughs> like, what's so I'm trying to figure out what do I do in soccer? Do I commit more? And I don't think I commit more. I don't plan on buying more at this point. Do I sell some? Go more into baseball, but like, what's the point there? If I'm I'm staying in limited, I already have 120 cards. Like, what do I do? Like, I don't want to take money out of the of so rare. You know, I'm just gonna put it right back in anyway. So, <laughs> like, what do I do? What is my plan? And I'm trying to figure out what that plan is as far as soccer goes because I want MLS and I want you know all of those leagues to be fun and I want to watch. I want to watch the Portuguese leagues. I want to watch the English premiership i also want to watch the english championship and seeing where things have gone after the first week is very intriguing and now you know i, I really laid in and talked about celtic celtic has not been great they just happen to be like this year they just happen to be great this week and so this could just be a red herring like, like who knows we'll see what happens you only time only time will tell but i have my own concerns am i paranoid yeah probably you know, I consider all of the money that I've already put in lost. Yep, pretty much do. But am I having fun? Yeah, I am. And that is the thing that has me. I didn't have fun this week. <laughs> like that, but that's the thing. I didn't have fun because I am still taking my time to figure out where I'm putting all of my players. It was very easy to know that all of my Asian players, I'm putting them in the Asian competitions. I knew where to look. They were all kind of pushed together. But then like, I look at my all-star team or my challenger team and like, there's guys in MLS, there's guys in Portugal, there's guys in, you know, Denmark, like they're just all over. The place. What the heck is happening? <laughs> like, oh, I can't follow any of this stuff. So, and I'm not a smart man anymore. Like I'm, I'm too old to be thinking very hard. So, <laughs> you know, go Brewers. Yeah. Go Brewers. No. <laughs> so Brewers, uh, no, really good stuff there. Uh, you made a good point. You said it's it's all for fun, and I'll tell you what's fun. MLS games are very fun. Uh, I went to one, and uh, yeah, soccer is such a great experience. Good crowd vibes. Had a great time. Uh, thank you, John, so rare for hooking me up with those. Um, all right, well, Bob, it is two ten on the dot. That means the first MLB game has started. We got to get out of here. The White Sox and the Braves are about Ooh. to throw the first pitch. We need to sweat our game week two. Lineups. We need to get the content out to the people. Um, any closing thoughts for the people? Any hot takes? So uh, what's what's going to happen in game week two? Are you going to win uh, now that you've done the pod or what? Uh, I mean, that's usually what happens, right? Like every time I talk to you, I end up winning something, which yeah. I'm okay doing. Like I'm good with that. I mean, winning is fun. You know, I have to, I'm going to need your help if I ever win champion to figure out like what I should actually get as a trophy because it's not a card anymore. Like, and that's the thing. And I am not cool enough to get a big necklace with a dollar sign on it, you know? So, you know, we'll see what happens, but what do your teams look like this week? I'm really curious what your teams look like, who you're going to be sweating, like who your big teams are. I want to see those are. My teams. I mean, you, we mentioned Royals. They have four games. Uh, I happen to have uh, three Royals um, in my limited collection. I don't have a ton of, of limited cards, but I do have three Royals. I got them in there and I got a two man uh, pirate stack as well. Um, and then my pitchers, I did not have good pitchers this week. I actually went out and, and picked up a $5. Uh, Brian Bayo, who's facing Oakland, uh, your yep. Oakland team. Yep. Um, so I, I, I needed to go out and get someone who was at least, at least I, have, I was kind of high on him. I, you know, there's still some better guys out there that I couldn't quite get to. I don't have a Jesus Lazardo, but I do have Bayo going with those Royals guys. So I'm hoping that 
um, hoping they can do they can do well. But it's an interesting week because there's not you know there isn't that slam dunk spot like Braves are playing five games or anything like that. So you kind of have to go with these these Royals uh, type players. So I think it'll be an interesting week. We'll see uh, we'll see some crazy stuff on the leaderboard. I think. So which Pirates are you going with though? Like please tell me it's Rowdy Talaz and Kutch because that would be incredible. <laughs> Uh, it is neither. It is Brian Reynolds and um, oh, keep okay, Brian Hayes. Yeah, they're awesome. Like, they're incredible, dude. Like, yeah, no, they were both good. Last week. I mean, they they swept the Marlins. They they were good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm using think... them too. So like, we're on the same page here, man. And I mean, I drafted Brian Reynolds. I reached for Brian Reynolds in my year long fantasy draft too. So I'm all about those guys. Like, they are that top three is really fun. When it comes yeah. to it, I mean, it's, I mean, did you, if you're going to tell me that Connor Joe was going to lead off of them, I would have laughed, but <laughs> he is, you know, and then he's got Reynolds behind him with, oh man, I just, it's just a lot of fun. Brian Hayes has been fantastic. Cut behind him. I mean, if yeah. you're good enough where you're hitting O'Neill Cruz, like six or seven, like that's pretty cool. Like I understand that yeah. Cruz needs to be more patient, but when he hits the ball, it is fun and just the call of another cruise missile always makes me happy it's i can talk about the pirates i've got them up to like three or four percent of my collection bonuses too like it's, <laughs> i think i'm starting mitch keller in somewhere somehow this week so yeah let's go man yeah no i'm, I'm high on o'neill cruz i uh, couldn't really get to him because he was expensive uh yeah. in the marketplace unfortunately because he has limited cards he didn't play um a full season last year but uh, I'll get to him eventually. Maybe I'll win him as a reward uh, this week. We, we shall see. But I am excited. I'm excited to watch some baseball. And uh, Bob, I really appreciate you coming on, talking some so rare. Uh, we could talk so rare forever. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like the people already know where you are. I usually have people plug um, their stuff. People already know your, your orange fly on, on Twitter. Um, but um, but yeah, anywhere else they can find you? Hey, I, I'm on Twitter most of the time. I'm usually posting stuff about baseball. I'm usually retweeting stuff from you or – so we're FP. I'm always in the Sower FP Discord uh, for anyone that has questions. It's by far, I consider at least the best, one of the best services that you can actually use for it. It's essentially projections based on FORP and a whole bunch of other calculations that are perfect for baseball. And it lines up and it kind of works with SoRare very well to the point where it gives you a general feel for where your scores are going to be and what you can do. I mean, I think that my champion team scored about 290 last week. I think my projected score was like 292. So like amazingly, it was all right in sync when it came right down to it. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, I love it. I'm always over there. We're always answering questions. We're always helping people out. And every now and then I'll hop into regular Discord. And so if there's questions, I'm always willing to answer stuff. And if you have, if you follow me on Twitter or whatnot, if I follow you, feel free to DM me. Like I will talk about baseball all the time. You know, I'm working during the day, like right now, I'm actually working. Not really. <laughs> and that's okay. I will always stop and talk about baseball so <laughs> or soccer or whatever you want to talk about. So Love it. Yeah, make sure to get on the Sower FP Discord as well. Alex there, proven winner we saw in game week one. So check that out for sure. And make sure to reach out to Bob too and ask some questions. All right. Well, this has been another episode of Sideline Talk, episode 40. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you again to Bob for stopping by. And we will catch you guys next week. Thanks all. Thanks, Hunter.